Yaman, almost. Nitalat, Professor. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so, the work that I'm going to talk about is on controlling cracking in concrete. Um, and I asked this question yesterday um, how many people are worried about cracking in concrete? Pretty much, if you deal with cracking in concrete, you will be worried about cracking in concrete because every durability problem that you think of in concrete, starting with corrosion, if you have um, sulfate attack, any of those things are uh, started and exacerbated by cracking. So the question is, how do we reduce cracking? Before that, we have to ask, what causes cracking in concrete? Uh, pretty much anything, right? Uh, so when you put in concrete, the high ratio of cement makes it crack. And then you put it on surface, the fatigue of fatigue load of vehicles going through it makes it crack. If you're in a cold environment, freezing and thaw thawing makes it crack. You put in salt to control freezing and thawing, that causes corrosion, corrosion causes cracking. So pretty much anything that you do to concrete will crack. It. And we have never done anything that controls cracking at the fundamental level. We've always tried to patch concrete. Okay, freezing and thawing, what do we do? We throw in some air voids, we can control it in some fashion. Early age cracking, you have to throw in some fly ash, maybe that'll control cracking. So our idea is, okay, let's move away from patching and see if we can actually come up with fundamental solutions to attack the problem at the base. Why do we give antibiotics when you can actually control genomically, right? That's, that's the in thing now, gene, gene therapy, control things genomically. So what I'm going to talk about is kind of genomic advances in the way that we deal with, with concrete. So the idea is, when you have cracking in concrete, that is because you will have alternating stresses in concrete. Concrete, like we all know, cannot take tension. That's why we throw in steel reinforcement, take care of tension. But at my view, you can't put in steel everywhere in concrete. But there is cement everywhere in concrete, which hydrates. So the question now is, can we reduce this magnitude of the cyclic stresses that happens all the time? And one of the ways to do it is to put in these uh, micro encapsulations called phase change materials. So think of it as paraffin wax. When you melt, when you heat the wax, the energy that you give to wax is used in changing the phase of the wax from solid to liquid. But when you take the energy off and you melt it, wax becomes a solid back again. So instead of the energy being supplied to the concrete to crack the heat energy, you are now using that heat energy to melt and solidify the wax. Which means you're fooling concrete into thinking that, okay, you can produce heat, but don't worry, you're not going to crack because something else is accepting the heat and changing its face. So that idea is going to be used um, in, this, in this project where we internally store and release heat. So you basically, your material becomes a smart material, becomes an auto-adaptive material. Of course, you have to know what kind of capsules that you want to put in, so we have strategies on, on how to do that. So that's basically um, the, the idea. Now, um, our innovations are, we can't throw in wax into concrete because that make it weak. But if you throw in, if you have to put in 5% of wax in concrete, how do you put in, how do you make sure that you inject the right amount of material in the right kind of way? And it opens a completely new market in terms of how do you make these encapsulations themselves? There's no market now, but nobody knows how to do it. What's the way to do this encapsulation? So it's a completely different um, market apart from infrastructure industries. So we have a lot of people coming in and, and putting their materials into infrastructure. This is another avenue. Uh, how do you design those materials? Can I design for Phoenix, Arizona the same way as I do it for Delft, Netherlands? Probably not. Uh, how would I help it? Can I make 100 mixes in the lab and test all the time? So do we, do we need some technologies and tools and software to model those behaviors? So that's one thing. That those are the toolkits that we're talking about to help engineers design with it. Um, how do we get improvements in early age cracking and long term fatigue cracking and freeze thaw resistance? At the end of the day, everybody will ask, okay, I put all of these, how long will the material last? So we have to look at life cycle assessment, we have to look at loss. Um, why should the results be taken up? Again, that's a whole idea of what I talked about so far. Um, I, I think I jumped the gun and told you why this has to be. Um, what we are trying to give is a comprehensive method for cracking reduction, not a black box, but what an engineer can, based on what he is looking at, tailor the material for the application that he wants. Uh, so it intrinsically applies, um, changes the material behavior, applies for several modes, and then of course a long-term benefit in, in enhancing concrete durability. 
So one of the ways that we want to do this is, is multiple tracks. One is we want to understand what happens at the fundamental scale so that we can give the tools to companies manufacturing these materials to come up with tailored inclusions for the right applications, which means a software will tell us, we'll develop a software that will tell you if you're in the Netherlands and you're putting your concrete in March, uh, or if you probably won't put anything in March, right? I'm still in Arizona mode. Um, so if you're putting it in, um, in whatever climates that you have, what kind of phase change material should go in to control the heat of hydration of cement? Look at what kind of loads your structure is going to take, what kind of stresses you have, what is the structural design, so that you can say, do you want the phase change material on the surface? Do you want it as a layer in the middle? Do you want it if it's a bridge deck? Do you have evaporative cooling, top and bottom? So we can find out where you want it, so it's a combined design material solution to make the infrastructure uh, last long. So, um, we have our um, website eclipse.asu.edu and we have our partners which is Technalia in Spain, EMPA in Switzerland, Delft, uh, TU Delft right next door um, and University of California, Los Angeles with Arizona State University. Thank you.